Hey, don't worry. Don't I know worry. what I, I know what I'm doing, and I say hello to everybody. Hi. And hold on a second. Then I got to bring this up so I can see the picture. Let me see here. Uh, there we go. I'm do Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm just uh, f doing a few things I should. I, I have to do in order to do this stupid little show. Uh, hold on a second. A little more up no, there. No, I, I have to do it a certain way. Okay. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to see stuff, okay? All right. All right. Anyway, hi, everybody. How are you? I wish I, I should have just started by going, hi, how are you? And then it would be okay, but no, I, I can't do that. Uh, but uh, this is, of course, The Ramble, and it is the TV uh, kind of version of The Ramble that we do here. And I've just turned on our, um, our Skype lines. And let me explain to you, if you call us on Skype, which is GabNet Live, Skype being a, a voice over internet protocol, VoIP, um, if you, if you uh, call us, we might have some problems getting you on. But don't worry about it. The phone will ring, and then I will hang up on you. I'm not being rude. And then I will immediately call you right back. And so some people are going to see this, okay? And the first guy up this evening, hey, ladies and gentlemen, there he is. here's Jason. Hi, hey, Jason. Jason. Hey, how's it going? How you doing? We haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. How you been? Pretty good. How's hey, on your that? website, I was listening to you. You got like a double feedback loop or something going on. What? Yeah, there's like, I was hearing you a couple of times talking about, you know, opening up the lines as like a, you know, roll on over, roll on over as just a, a loop. Really? Let me, hold on a second. Let me just go look. Uh, da, 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 da. It looks okay. Hold on a second. Let me see if there's, let me turn up the audio here and see if it's okay. Wait a minute. Well, there it is. Hey, and gentlemen, there he is. here's Jason. No, it's fine. It's oh. fine. It's yeah, fine. My computer was a, a loop going back and forth. I even closed out Skype and restarted it. It was doing the same thing. Oh, really? Nah, well, yeah. That was weird. Yeah. Anyway, we're okay. So how you doing? Yeah. We, haven't, we haven't seen you in a couple of, uh, uh, couple of weeks. Wait a minute. Here comes, here comes Scott. It says add to group. Let's see if this works. Uh, hello, hey, uh, Scott, Scott. Are you there, Scott? There he is. Nope. He, oh, now he is. Are you there, Scott? Yeah. Okay. Can you yeah, but now we got to bring J Jason. Are you there? Yep, I'm still here. I clicked on the camera and it went away. Now it yeah. comes back. Okay, yeah. good. And click on the camera, Scott, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm going to have to call back because I'm talking to you, but I'm looking at the busy sign. Again. Busy. Looking at the busy the, sign? Yeah, wait, not the other night. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, wait, hold on one second while I uh, call um, Phil Did Meyer. you call me back? You, I can call you back too, okay? No, well. All right, let me let me let, let me call let me call let me call Phil. Okay? Oh wait a second, no, I think it's okay. It's okay. okay. Never okay. mind. Add Phil. I know what I group. did wrong. Okay, uh, Phil should be coming in soon. Uh, okay. Let's see what happens. Uh, hello, Phil. How are you? Yeah. How you feeling? Uh, you got, you got, you got, I, I, I feel like a piece of homemade shit. <laughs> <laughs> really? Are you? Are you? Uh, I, Talk yeah, to us a second. Just froze up. Uh, no, now you're okay. No. Now, you, now you're okay. What is, what is all that that's happening? Listen to that. I don't know. I'm losing your audio. This is, this is ridiculous. This is just ridiculous. Are you there, Scott? There's, there. Yes. No, but I'm having yes. problems. Hear me? Listen to this. Okay, let me get rid of you, Phil. I'll call you back. Okay. There, it was, that was something with Phil's call. Okay. Yeah, there was a noisy, no, you know what I hate about this? I'm, I may give up on this whole project, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Uh, because, there we go. Uh, be, because of just this, that it takes me a half hour to get Skype working right, you know? Now are you there, Phil? Yeah, I'm here. See, you have you, my video? Now, now everything's fine. Yeah. Everything's just perfect. It's, it's yeah. hunky-dory. Anyway. Yeah, well, I guess you hadn't heard about Skype Plus. What? You know? Skype Plus. Is there Skype Plus? Yeah, that that's the one that works fine. Oh, I see. Okay, no. I, you have to pay for the customer service. There's right. A, there's Skype Business. Yeah. But that... 
that wouldn't work right for us, you know. It's, there are all kinds of little problems, you know. So anyway. Uh, so a, a, anyway, we haven't heard from Jason. Have we heard from you since the election, Jason? Yes. Yeah, uh, it's right after the election. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that one Friday. So have you gotten used to the whole thing now? No, I still find it hard to believe, and especially once they start talking about the appointments oh, that he's making, yeah. it's, it's just, or, it's, you know, the nominations that he's making, it's just, well, there was it, good, it's just nuts. There was good news that came over like, my, over my, uh, over the wires just a couple of minutes yes. ago that I got the headline on, and that is that Rudy Giuliani has taken his name out of consideration uh, to for be anything. in the, for anything in the administration, and I think the reason is he is so fucking crooked. He doesn't want to go through the vetting process. Yeah. What did I tell you last week? I said that Rudy Giuliani would not get nominated and that he would be an insider that had access to the White House. And what is it? What is it? Phil was right. Really? Uh, I don't think he's going to take. Uh, uh, what's his name? Romney either. He gave Romney some Romney relative. Uh, a position in the RNC. Um, yeah. It's Romney plus another last name. Really? You know, a, a woman, I believe. Okay. Well, yeah. it, you know what? But his appointment to the EPA, oh. you know, I know that you're not a climate change believer, Phil, but, oh. you know, was it 97% of scientists are? Worldwide. And, better damn hope that those three percent who are not believers are right because it, you know if they're wrong and want to do whatever the hell they want look at venus there ain't fucking life on venus yeah and that's you what happened to earth this life? If they're wrong you call this life yeah uh, i'm alive you know, i'm breathing i have a child who's alive and breathing and yes. you know i don't want to be runaway uh, greenhouse gases you know to overtake our planet and kill us all well, if he yeah. can negotiate a better deal than he negotiated, because no one else seems to have to conform with this except the U.S. He's going to dismantle. Talk the into the microphone. Well, you have it all the way over there. No, you have to talk into it. He's going to dismantle EPA. So. And and a lot of it should be. No, it shouldn't. Well, you know, I mean, everybody has different views on how things should be yeah, run. Yeah, and some of them are right and some of them are wrong, and the anti-EPA view is wrong. I'm like, oh, what are these people doing? What's it called? The Environmental Protection, Protection Administration. Agency. So you're a okay. agency. So are you against protecting the environment? I'm against uh, the draconian rules that they set up that hamper uh, like what, our Phil? ability like to to manufacture and to uh, uh, so now, they should just know, be able to release all oh, the oh, so they should the yeah, yeah release all this shit in it exactly uh, I think that a lot of this carbon stuff is hooey oh, and, but uh, it's not. and it's just a matter of another tax that uh, you know, but, but see here here's one thing I've always wanted to ask the non-believers what is evidence that global climate change is not happening because there's plenty of evidence that it is happening give me some evidence that it's not happening why why is uh, the efforts that have been made by this country uh, and the payments that we make to this Paris Accord, which seems to be nothing more than a UN funding agency and, and a scare tactic? I, I say that there's a lot That's of... That's not things. evidence that it's not happening, that climate well, change is not know, happening, that it's not warmer change. this year than we were last year, and last year wasn't warmer than we were the year before, and that the year before wasn't... You know, every year is the new warmest year, and every year allergies are worse and worse, and the, this is the worst year for allergies yet. This is the worst year for allergies yet. That's been going on for how many years now? Yeah, and, and well, it's true. Uh, I may be, I may be uh, the uh, suffering the effects of global warming because I'm shivering right now, uh, <laughs> because I have the flu. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, and, and may you shiver forever with your feelings about the EPA. Plenty of liquid. But, but like, for instance, you probably the, the, don't believe in science. I, I read, you didn't get a flu I, shot, did I, you? I read something today. No I came across the Internet. I may, may be wrong because I don't watch the news. Okay. But the, the person he wants appointed as the uh, Secretary of Education never went to public school. Well, she's oh. also against public school funding. She wants to take the money and put it all into charter schools. I like that. And, so and, did and Jerry fuck, Brown. Fuck the inner city, basically, so kids won't have free education. Well, let, let me ask you this. Is, uh, uh, is Oakland an inner city? 
when Mayor uh, uh, Jerry Brown, <laughs> no, Jerry Brown was the uh, mayor of Oakland, he uh, instituted charter schools. Now that he's in the pocket of the teachers union, uh, he's, uh, as governor, uh, he, he's not pushing the, uh, the charter schools. But these kids that went to the charter schools got better grades, showed up on time. That's not true. Uniforms. That's not true. Respect. It's not true, Phil. The national statistics on that is is that the uh, charter public, schools Jeffries. have actually fallen behind the public schools. By the way, let me just say who's here right Pretty now tough. for the audience, the audio audience. Uh, Scott Boddicker, Phil Beyer, Rob Alfano has joined us, uh, Jason has joined us and from Hawaii, James Lee, hey, James. who today is indoors, hey, not outdoors. Hi. What is it, raining outside? It's Snowing. 73 degrees, it's cold, and it's 89% humidity. We are sweating, wow. sweating. Uh, and all the rats have, have come snow. into the house. Today, I was wa- I, I went out to get my I went out to get my hair cut. And I got my social security letter today for 2017. I'm getting a three tenths of a percent increase for Whoopsie. next year. Yay! <laughs> Spend that three dollars anywhere. And with that, That's $56 I'm saying a month for me if I don't drop dead. Good night. <laughs> And, and my Medicare Part B went up to $134. That's all right. Part B went up to $134? Yeah, out here at Kaiser, here, uh, Senior Advantage for us people in Kaiser, it's uh, we pay the first $400 of full uh, 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 wait a uh, minute. Prescription pharmaceutical. Wait a minute. Prescription wait. Oh, pharmaceutical you, you, before you, Kaiser you, takes you, over. You mean Part, up, to, you, you mean part D? Uh, no, actually, it's Part B. Which is that? The, is that the is that the drug Supplemental. thing? Supplemental. Yeah, it, oh. it's a supplemental. Uh, actually, I don't have to worry about it because uh, it's taken care of by a former employer. Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, Kaiser, uh, as far as uh, seniors out here on Medicare, here on the Big Island, we must pay the first six days of hospitalization at two hundred ninety bucks a day. That's about eighteen hundred bucks. That's not bad. It's three thousand, you know, eighteen hundred bucks. If you're in the hospital, Mister Bennett, for more than Six days for us old guys. We're dead. Come yeah, on, we're know. dead anyway. So you're never yeah, going to have dead. to pay it anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. they're going to they're going to they're going to lean our estate. It's no big deal. <laughs> Come on. I mean, I don't worry about Kaiser. You know, outpatient surgery out here is two hundred ninety bucks. That's no big deal. Yeah, we can handle that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, nevertheless, uh, well, I I'm not, I don't want to get into that whole thing again. But uh, I know, I know. Uh, but the point is, how do you how do you actually put a person in charge of education? Who never went to public school? I guess uh, she had a better education, uh, and uh, you know she's. Uh, uh, yeah. If you like charter schools, that's be the person to put in charge of it. The same thing with the department yeah, well, of. You really, um, you really want to do away with public schools? Oh yeah, I think it's a farce. Look at wait, look wait, at the wait, quality wait, wait, of wait, education. Wait, wait, wait. Look yeah, at what yeah, we're oh, yeah. Look, look, at, look at me. I turned out terribly. Look at you. You yes. went to a public school, didn't you? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, and you turned out okay. P- Rob, go to a public school? Absolutely. How did you do? But we're from a different you generation. Okay. My How about you, just Scott? Turned Scott? Today. Scott? So what are you saying? Wait a minute. We're Wait a minute. Turn on generation. your mic, Scott. I'm saying we went, we went to school. Hold on. Will you shut up a second, Phil? I'm trying to say something here. Okay. Scott, are you there? That's why I mute. So I, when I yell at Phil, uh, you uh, don't hear it. <laughs> I don't hear it. Let me Good ask idea. you a question. You got two girls, right? Do you have two uh, girls, yes. Scott? Who is, no, I have three. Three girls. And they all went to public school, didn't they? No. No? Where did they, they go? They went to public uh, elementary and, and uh, middle school, but they went to private school. Uh, it, high school. For, high, for the last two years of their schooling? Yeah. Oh, okay. Four. Okay. But what would you say was the quality of that versus the public school, and why did you send them to the private school? I sent them to the private school because the – Public school was was uh, too large. I felt it was too large for a good um, base for my girls. Yeah. They uh, there was uh, uh, graduating classes of thirteen hundred students in each class. Mm-hmm. So you're it's like going to college almost in high school. Yeah. Whereas at the uh, private school they had a a class of uh, maybe a hundred and fifty. Okay, but this wasn't what we would call a charter school. This was no, a no, private was, was, school. No, I, I I paid my public taxes for yeah. the public high school or the public high school, and I and we paid for them to go to private private school. Right. And it wasn't cheap, but 
it was uh, you know a, a choice to do because yeah I just did I don't like I didn't like the way Plano does Plano. whoops oh, hi. <laughs> is, hi hi Patrick a little yeah, little, Patrick, little yeah. noisy there but that's okay anyway what were you gonna say about the private public school because it was but just the public too- schools are great here they're great if if you want to. You know, most of my Republican friends send all their kids to the public high school. Oh, by the way, I Phil, th- Phil, did you send your kids to private school? Almost. Uh, my house <laughs> almost. It's almost. It's almost like oh. being almost pregnant, isn't it? I no, mean, uh, it was the Arenda, uh, the Akalani School District. It's the number one school district in the state. People pay for a thirteen hundred square foot ranch house, yeah. um, a million three to live in Arenda. And um, so that pays as well as all the participation. I asked you a simple question. Was it a public school? Yes. And did they get it? That's fine. But you're you're saying public schools should all be wiped away because they're no good. I didn't say they should be wiped away. I said you should have a choice to where you could go to a charter school if you wanted to. You know because I believe happen? that inner city you know schools are you know, failing. And, and, our and you know what's going to happen? Poor kids are going to be going to the public schools. Rich kids to the charter they schools. They get a voucher. They can J- go wherever they want. Oh, vouchers are bullshit. Jason? A lot of the inner city schools are failing because the tax base isn't there and they don't got the money to do the education that they got to hey. do in the suburbs. You know, and I'm a product of a public school of the later generation, too. I'm only 36, and it's probably about the same Absolutely. now in public schools mm-hmm. as it was when I went to school. Yeah. They mm-hmm. couldn't spank me when I went to school. I could basically, you know, tell a teacher to go F off if I really wanted to, but I didn't, you know, yeah. because my parents were involved, and my parents, you know, taught me respect to have. And so, you know, that's a problem that we're having a lot of day. You know, a lot of times now it doesn't matter if you send your kid to public or private school if the parents are involved is what the issue is. Rob, your hand is up. I don't believe in this, you know, because there's a problem, you throw out the entire solution and come up with a different one, you fix it. And the problem with the public school systems, especially where I come from in New York, is that there's poor management. Okay, there's cronies who make a shit ton of money and they squeeze what they give to the students. And there's all these people who make all these huge salaries. And instead of maybe going with charter schools, instead of having uh, you, you've got five school districts in a 20 mile radius of each other in, in, in Long Island, mm-hmm. you got you got all these six figure, seven figure salaries that, that are, you know, if you got chancellors in each of these districts, right? Why don't they consolidate them and make a larger pool and, and use some of that money to educate the children instead of having the highest taxes in the land. And then you still have to take your kids on the first day of school and you get a list of supplies. Okay. And you got to bring paste and yeah. you got to bring paper. What kind of crap is that? Uh, Jason had his hand up. Mine's real quick. It's because the superintendent is making all the freaking money. It's not the teachers. The teachers right. ain't making crap anymore. They well, used to no, be on the same par as doctors, and now they ain't making crap. Me working for the telephone company, I make more money than the average teacher makes. That's the way it is here in Virginia, too. But on Long Island, I know somebody who's retired as a teacher. She retired at 59 years old at over $75,000 a year with free medical for the rest of her life. Phil. Good, that's the way it should be. Phil. Unions. That's the problem. Oh, okay. It started with Shanker, and it continued from there. There are a bunch of thugs, and they're the ones that are running the show, and they're uh, they're feeding at the trough, and the kids are suffering. So I say throw out the baby with the bathwater, get the charter schools, give these kids an opportunity, a voucher. You want to go to a private school? Here. And... No, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, I have to hang up on Mark. I got to go back to my people. I, I'm having all kinds of little problems here getting Mark on. Call on hold. Resume call. Allowing these administrators. To- yeah. Administrators are not union, Phil. Know what the union is and know what the union is not. Management is not union. Administrators are not union. Well, maybe if these charters. Maybe they should be. Maybe uh, maybe if these charters get them in line. were run properly. Uh, I mean, these public schools were run properly. That would be one thing, but they're not for all the reasons that uh, Rob has cited. 
But fix them. Why do we need to bring in another solution? If you start bringing in charter schools, all you're doing is taking money away from the public school system. There's enough money. We're all being taxed enough to educate our children. One solution, one system could do it. We don't need competing systems to do it. This if the system it failed used it. To work, I, I know it failed. It failed because of corruption. It failed right. because of power. But it could be fixed. It's the same thing, the same argument I have with you regarding unions. Unions serve the purpose in this country. Yes, they got out of control. Yes, stupid stuff happened. So instead of just throwing them out, fix it. Resolve the issues. Get rid of the corruption. Okay, let me say, can I say something here? Mark Green, if you're listening to me, try again. I'm having trouble getting Mark on. I'm using the method that we've been using. And somehow when I add him to the call, it says call failed. And I don't know what the problem is. So just try again, Mark, okay? Anyway, you were going to say something, Phil? Uh, no, I, 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 I agree with Rob in a lot of ways. But I, where I disagree is that you can't fix something that's so broken, you're going to have to step in and make some changes and everybody fears change nobody wants change everybody fears change but they'd rather not have change and allow things to continue well, why is the way this? they are because they're fearful uh, listen, of it uh, yes rob because what you want to change and the way you want to change it especially with the schools you're 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 splitting the atom in a way you're you're there's excellent there's a pot of money to educate our children you can't have two healthy systems. So you're saying, well, there could be charter schools and there could be public schools. Well, where's the money coming from? If the money isn't going to the public schools, it's being withdrawn from the public schools, what's going to happen to the public schools? The public At schools will have to run a little leaner. The, how can they run leaner? They got to tell the administrators, hey, listen, why don't you make uh, no more than three times what a teacher makes? So why can't you just fix that? You can't. But that's the union's fault, isn't it, Phil? No, that's not the union's fault. I'm saying, but that's why he's been sitting there blaming the union. And it's, you know, at my school, you know, the superintendent is making a half a million dollars a year, where a teacher is making $60,000 a year. Half a million. So, yeah. It's about right for a superintendent. By the way, I'm trying to bring Mark Green in. And hey, Mark, I don't know what it is, but I, everybody else, I seem to be able to get in tonight without any problem just by hanging up on you and then recalling you and it just says call failed every time i try to call you back so i don't know what the problem is does he realize that he has to click on the uh, uh on the uh, camera yeah when you call him back uh, no they, it says call failed oh yeah well, it has nothing to do with the camera hey you know we have uh, yes james out here in Hawaii, uh, most, most parents do send their children to catholic schools obama went to uh punahou High in uh, Honolulu, you know, Punahou is the head Royce or Bishop O'Dowd of Honolulu, mm -hmm. and the tuition there now is over twenty-one thousand a year. It's just a day school, but it's the gateway to Harvard, no doubt about it. And it's going to uh, be. And also in Hawaii, uh, what school you went to has an influence in your network for work in this state. Literally, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate to say it, but uh, if you come in from the outside, the first question they ask you is, "What school did you go to?" And that tells you your whole genealogy. <laughs> and, and that's what's going to happen with charter schools. Yeah, it's well, going to be the, the the fortunate will do very well. It's fear. And by it's the way, the, te the teachers in 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 uh, in, uh, in charter schools make less than people do in public schools, and you're going to get and and they they are vetted less than a person is who is a teacher in a public school. For instance, m most teachers in public schools uh, have a master's degree or have to after a certain time, or they can't remain being teachers. Uh, I don't think that's true with with, uh, 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 with uh, uh, charter schools. Uh, Jason, and then I wanna, I wanna bring Patrick into this conversation, but go ahead, Jason. Two quick points. One, I knew uh, in Michigan, they're pushing online schools a lot, you know, for public school. I met a lady who was a teacher for an online school. She's making $15,000 a year, which is Ooh, freaking ridiculous. Fifteen thousand dollars a year a as, as a teacher. So, and then uh, also, you and, 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 isn't there an old saying that you discriminate? Isn't there an old saying that you get what you pay for? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, charter schools too. You got to remember they can discriminate on who they take. They don't have to take everybody. They can only take the smartest kids. If a kid's a problem child, they don't have to take that kid. So you know that that's uh, a little unfair 
you know, for a kid who might be running into some problems also or might have some learning disabilities or he's not going to be able to go to the school that he wants to go to or if you keep the money in the public school district, mm -hmm. you know, it works out a little bit better for the kids. What about the handicapped kids? Do they have to take them, the special needs kids? What do they do with them? Just let them rot in some... I don't think they can discriminate. If they're going to accept the voucher, they got to take them. Yeah, well, that's a okay. Trump's bringing back making fun of the handicap. So is the oh, voucher is the voucher going to take care of one hundred percent of the kids' education? What's I don't the know. voucher work? Because yeah, if, if, to, if, if, if to get if, the kid a position if, in the school, if in fact the voucher is oh, going to take work. care of the cost of the kid going to that to school. Then why don't you just keep the public schools open? You're doing the same thing. What are you doing that, with the vouchers? No, you got a little. You're not getting the same. No, what you're, you're doing, what you're doing, what you're doing is you're creating. You, you you're on. creating. You can't a, discriminate. No, you're discriminating. You're causing discrimination where poor people will go to the pri the public wait. schools. And wait a minute, you're not listening to me, Phil. Oh, no, you have blinders on. I don't have blinders on. I know what I see. The fact is that you watch what's going to happen. Poor people are going to go to public schools, at basically blacks, Hispanics, and so on, and the white kids are going to be going to the charter schools. That's your that's your imagination running wild. Patrick, did you, have a, did you have a public... In Michigan, it's already been proven that yes. the charter schools actually aren't doing as good as the public schools are. That's where what? Betty's from, right, Michigan? Yeah. Uh, Betty DeVos... Oh, yeah. DeVos, yes, yes, oh, she is. Yeah. Uh, Western Michigan, uh, Grand Rapids, Dick DeVos, he ran for uh, governor and was defeated pretty bad a few years ago. He's an Amway guy. That's yeah. an Amway uh, family. Yeah. yeah. A bunch of pricks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we don't need jobs. We got Amway. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> but Patrick, are you, did you go to, you went to a public school, right? I went to private school. But talk a little louder, Patrick. I, for some reason, we can't hear you. Went to a private grade school. Yeah. What? Uh, public high school, and then I. Went to a oh. uh, Alex, try your uh, Skype feed. I don't uh, think so. I I see him frozen. I don't see his picture moving at all. Uh, yeah. Videos uh, are bad. Yeah. He'll, yeah. He'll, he'll, he's, hey, uh, he's paralyzed. He doesn't move much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try, he try. rolls around. Okay, uh, don't tell me how to run this, Phil. I know what my problems are on this end. Okay. Well, I, I heard I, you a. You can't. Uh, you can't see the problems like I see them here. Okay. So, you know. Oh, nobody knows my troubles, yeah. Old Man River. Yeah. Anyway, it's, try it again, Patrick. All right. Is this any better? That's much better. Okay. I went to a private grade school for grade one through eight. And I went to a public high school, and then I went to a private uh, college. Okay. All right. So you went to some public high schools then? Yeah, I went to public and private. Okay. All right. Um, you, you, I think your bandwidth's a little bad, but it could clear up, you know, as the time goes on. I see your picture clears up, and then it's fine. And James Lee, I'm seeing his floor tonight. Uh, the That's right. I'm fighting a rat invasion. Those are holes behind my stove there. I'm going to patch them up. Oh, like, that's not old? Okay. Well, that's up. right. You see the holes in the wall there? Hey, the, hey, the glue traps there? It's TV Wait. night tonight, so patch them up. Patch away. We can see you doing that's it. That's right. That's right. It's paradise. <laughs> paradise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, Scott. Does anyone have a quick and easy definition between the difference between a private school and a charter school? Charter school charter. is partially public funded. Private school is 100%, you know, you oh, pay. Okay. Partially funded by, okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, charter school, you get funded by uh, the vouchers and stuff already. Yeah. But you say that in Michigan, the uh, the, the uh, charter schools, and I, I hear that this is the situation throughout the entire country, still fall behind the oh, record yes. set by the by the public schools. For a few Look, years, it, it was looking like they were better than the public schools, but then they actually did uh, some audits on them, found them basically cooking the books. And then also, like I said, that they were actually discriminating on who they let in and not. So, hey, you're getting straight A's. You're allowed into the charter school. You're a D oh. student. You're not allowed into the charter school. You know, you've had a criminal record. You're not allowed into here. And, you know, even even with them doing that, they're still falling behind the public schools. Hmm. Well, 
what uh, do you can Scott? Can you look up the statistics of the uh, graduation rate in the, the uh, Michigan schools, uh, public schools, as a comparison to the charter schools? I suppose it's out there. Let me look. Yeah. All right, and that's probably still going to be you know the the grades that they were getting is what I'm talking about. Graduation probably is going to be higher because, like I said, they could discriminate on yeah. who they let in. Well, maybe they won't be able to discriminate in this new deal. Oh, come oh, what on. Is it? Come if on. If ants and butts this, were with candy this, with and this, nuts, every day would be Christmas. With this, yeah. with this <laughs> bitch as the secretary of, of uh, education, do you really think that's going to be true, Phil? Well, I am very happy about the appointees that uh, Trump has made so far. I like all the military guys. I like the guy that owns Carl's you, Jr. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. We know you're gonna. You, and and no matter how bad this country falls into disrepair in the next four years, you're gonna be in a state of constant denial. Well, I th you haven't had the effect of uh, Trump administration yet. Well, we will. Hey, Phil, Thank as a as a business owner, I want to ask you this. Do you think it's your responsibility to provide your employees with health insurance? My responsibility? No. Yeah. Uh, so then that, that's the way, that's the system believe. that we've been relying on for the last how many years. You know, you have a job, it's your employer's responsibility to provide you with health insurance rather than the individual's responsibility, which that's where the government is actually supposed to step in. When the individual isn't able to do any, to do it on their own, the government is supposed to step in and help out, you know, or you do it by paying your taxes and then everybody gets health insurance. And having a monopoly on health insurance with one single provider, one single payer, where everybody's paying into the same system helps bring the cost down. You know, that's that's the route to go. Why is America right on not doing it that way and the rest of the world is wrong when they're the ones who are doing single payer? Because why is it your responsibility, you know, Phil? Transparency is what brings the cost down. If you were given a voucher and you had a and and you only had, let's say, three hundred thousand dollars or whatever of of uh, coverage for that year for major major stuff or five hundred thousand You'd shop it a little bit to get the most. You shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be limited on what, how much coverage you're able to you have. You know something? You, you, should, know, you shouldn't even, you shouldn't even, let's try Mark Green again yeah. here and see what happens, okay? Uh, Mark, and we go add to group. And the call failed. That's, mm -hmm. that's weird. That's really weird. I've never had that problem here. Uh, but here, that, here that's one again. thing, Phil, though, you know, if you have too much competition when uh, health care, you know, you got you're not really going to be bringing the cost down when something's a necessity to have a monopoly on it and have a regulated monopoly. That's when you're going to be able to bring the cost down. That's why the bigger providers for health care are able to have lower costs than the smaller providers because they have more muscle to flex. If you're to only have one provider and it's the U.S. government, there's going to be transparency there because it's going to all be public records on how much I, stuff costs. I don't agree with you. They're not going to have a $500 hammer in health care. Yeah, but James, you know, and they, yeah. They, they have that $500 hammer you know, in, uh, in uh, defense because they don't want you to know how much they're spending on each individual little thing because then that gives away, yeah. you know, that opens up the candy store to the enemy and you don't want them to know how much you're spending on certain different tactics. Uh, uh, let me see here. First of all, Mark Green, try one more time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, put these people on hold, go to you and see if I can add you to the group. I don't know what the problem is with you uh, because all these other people got on with me hanging up on them and calling them right back. So maybe the lim the limit is reached tonight for some I'm reason. I'm going to drop out, I think. Uh, well, uh, you got to go, James. Yeah, I gotta take care of my rat holes. So, uh, Mr. Patrick, Mr. Rob, Mr. Phil, Mr. Jason, Mr. Scott, okay. Aloha. I gotta take care of my crawly creatures and uh, kill them all here in paradise. <laughs> can leave, James, can you see the yeah. snow on the mountain? Uh, yes, I can see the snow up there, but unfortunately, uh, the humidity is just killing us over here. You sweat, sweat, sweat. Okay, thanks, James. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, Jim. Okay, so we hang up on uh, on uh, on him. Remove person from group. Okay, uh, 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 Mark, give us a try again, uh, and let's see if you can get on now that there's one less person. I can't believe that because I think the other night we had more than this. 
Yeah, right. but some nights certain things work, and then they, they don't another night, and so it could be. Well, I'm sure people out there uh, watching the show on the TV love the way it looks because I mean everybody's really clear and widescreen and all of that. Uh, but anyway, Mark, if you're out there and you can hear me, uh, give it give it an, give it another try, and we'll see if it's just your line or whether it was that we had too many people on which I, I don't think is the problem, but give us a call again. Somebody else give us a call so we can add somebody to this group and see if that is the problem, you know. But anyway. Um, and I'm going to be leaving a, a little early tonight. I only have so much energy. Uh-huh. Well, you know, do what you can do. You know? All right. Yeah. I looked up, um, you know, if uh, recently there's been a spat of teachers. Spate. Uh, female teachers having sex with their uh, underage students. Uh, the last one was in uh, San Jose. Oh, uh, well, I thought, you, I thought you were going to say something negative about the public schools. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't see any of these coming out of charter schools. I only see the uh, uh, the the, uh, the sex squad in the uh, well. The public trouble schools. the trouble is that the the teachers in the in the in the charter schools are being paid so little they can't feed afford enough nourishment, and so therefore their libidos are very low. Uh, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway uh, mark again if you're out there call again let's see what happens now that uh, james lee has has left us i you know i uh, i i have to tell you i'm very very dismayed about this whole thing with skype because um we rely on skype as our as our lord and master in doing the citizen panel concept and when I have to constantly deal every night with their little peccadillos, and a couple of nights this week I didn't have to do this. I just did it like I always do it. Um, and it's not just me having the problem. It's also um, the intersection has the same problem. So that's in Texas, a different ISP. So it, you know, has, a, a, he's using a, I don't know what he's using, but I've tried it on a Mac and I still have a problem. So whatever. I don't know. I give up. Well, Mark is in Ohio, and uh, so he's probably on something different, too. Well, no, but, but it has nothing to do with the people calling. Oh. It has to do with something Skype is doing, and it's, it's fucking up the whole system, you know. And, I, mean, I mean, if I could easily add everybody, which I've done with everybody tonight, that's, I, I can go through that extra little process. It's a pain in the ass, but I can go through the process. But when somebody like Mark wants to get on and I can't get him on, I don't know whether it's the fault of the system or whether it's a problem he's having where he is. So I'd like Mark to call. I'd also like somebody else out there who's listening to us who normally calls to give us a call. Yeah, where's Renee? Yeah, where's Renee? You know, somebody so that we can see if we can add another person here. Uh, and so, no. Alex, uh, you haven't been paying attention to the news. Did, did you get the headline on your on your iPhone about Rudy Giuliani? Yes, I just meant I mentioned that uh, uh, early on here. That, uh, oh, okay. So, uh, so what's w what is he involved in? What did they get on him? Yeah, that's Has what uh, you know. It had to be something they uh, that, and you even agree with this, Patrick. Something scurrilous about his 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 de shenanigans uh, that he didn't want to come to light in some kind of uh, public forum. Yes, Patrick. And to that, you do have. You have to give the Trump administration at least that much credit that they looked at him and said he is so dirty that we can't even whitewash him to get him in our administration. So, uh, Reince Priebus said he was vetted and 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 passed with flying colors. That was Reince yeah. Priebus. Priebus. Yeah. Yeah, and then then the thing is though, Phil, I'm sure there's other shit that had been hidden and. You know, it could be one of his 75 ex-wives have something that all of a sudden they're interested in putting out there. Yeah. You know, um, and then the other thing is knowing how underhanded that Trump may or may not be, uh, Giuliani may be one of the, um, what do they call them, unofficial advisors too, where he still had the president's ear, but he's not as part of the cabinet. So... Yeah. Maybe Trump I mean, just doesn't like men who dress up in dresses. 
Now, I, I think, look, this guy had a shit-eating grin on his face thinking he was going to be Secretary of State. This guy wanted this so badly, and for him to just suddenly bow out, man, he was faced with a brick wall. Come on through it, and you're gonna you're just gonna bite off a lot more than you. Well, you got you got to sit in front of committees. You got to sit in front of investigations by those committees, and there's a lot of. I've told you before that he's got a shady past. He's dirty. All right, but he's dirty. He's not exempt from conflict of interest like the president and vice president is. So you know he has. No, he has no. uh, We're not talking about conflict of interest, Phil. We're talking about criminal activities. Well, this is what they said would be difficult for uh, for Giuliani because he has so many interests in other countries. So uh, you have to spin it somehow. But you don't make him Secretary of State. You could make him head of justice. Okay. Well, I guess uh, he didn't feel uh, that he was qualified for that. Oh yeah, sure. Giuliani doesn't think he's qualified for no, something. Not Giuliani. And what other what other daydreams are you going to try and pass off here tonight? Who did they? Who did they nominate for attorney general? Uh, they haven't yet, have they? I think he didn't. He throw a name out there. Somebody. I can't. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not reading the news. So. Um, hey, so since you're not reading the news, you heard that John Glenn died, right? Yeah, I know John Glenn died. Uh, you know, I get the headlines, okay, because they come across on my watch, on my iPhone. You know, as I said, I get my news by osmosis. You know, and so I know all the all the major. I mean, I knew about Giuliani tonight. That's why I brought it up. You know, and I I uh, uh, I knew about uh, this uh, Secretary of Education because I went to an ex girlfriend's site, and the, there was a whole list of things about this woman and why she shouldn't be um, uh, the Secretary of Education. Um, so Jeff uh, Sessions, huh? Jeff Sessions. Uh, Jeff Sessions, yeah. Okay, there's Seven Jeff Stein sessions. calling. Let me uh, call Jeff and add him to the group. He should work okay. Yeah, it's not saying call failed, you know. So uh, I, I let's see if, uh, if if Jeff answers. He's it's ringing. If I can see, it's ringing. Oh, there he is. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Hi. Uh, good. Can how you, do you hear feel, me now? Yeah. How do you feel about this question on Giuliani? You think? There's something stinky there that is keeping him from taking an administration post? Well, I think this is the best thing in the world. that We don't even have to think about him at all. He's gone. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He was a clerk when he was in New York. I mean, come on. Uh, Remember the guy who... By uh, the way, he was... him around? He was, I think, a Time Man of the Year. Mm -hmm. I think we Uh, looked... uh, Right uh, after uh, 9-11. Yes, he was Time Man of the Year in 2001. Yeah. So you see Hitler and Stalin and Mussolini and Giuliani have all been Time's Man of the Year. So. <laughs> That's right. Don't forget Obama. <laughs> Don't forget That's Obama. True. Definitely in the same class. Do you, do you notice, I think we noticed it the other night when we looked at the list that every president has become a Time Man of the Year at one point or another. Pretty much. Multiple times, in fact. So. Yeah. Well, uh, FDR twice, but then again, he was he served four terms, or almost four terms as president. Uh, but, uh, wow, you know, um, that, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. You, you, you hear Trump's upset because it's not really man of the year, it's person of the year. Yeah, person Because the they, they really couldn't determine what his sex was, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, what was I, there was, there was one other little piece of news that I forgot to bring up that I, that I ran across and uh, I thought was all germane to this. I don't think it has anything to do with Trump in particular, but I can't remember. Well, of course we brought this up last night that he's going to ma- remain executive producer of the apprentice. <laughs> well, and, and wait a minute. And Kellyanne, pres- Kellyanne, yeah. whatever her name is, Kellyanne Cuntface, what is her, what's her name? <laughs> Yeah. Cuntface? Yeah, <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> Kellyanne Cuntface. Uh, Ke- Kellyanne Cuntface um, said that he can do that because he'll do it in he'll his spare his time. time. Yeah, his spare time. Yeah, yeah. and and, and I think he likened it like if he played golf like Obama, it'd be like when Obama goes to play golf, instead of Trump yeah. going to play golf, he'll executive produce The Apprentice. Uh, this this uh, this um, celebrity apprentice has been in the can for uh, they said fourteen months, 
And uh, so there's really nothing that he's going to be involved with. Just his name is on it. And uh, it's actually owned by MGM, but it's going to be aired on NBC. So... Um, well, the, well, uh, I, I've mentioned all this before, and input. I don't. I don't think. I think it was filming a little bit less than fourteen months ago. If I if I re remember when they were in production, but the reason that show doesn't go on and sits in the can because the last season with Trump was in the can for a good year at least before they ever ran it was because the show is a failure. But it's cheap. To, when let me finish. It's cheap to produce. And so, therefore, they sit there and wait until there's some kind of empty slot, and they don't want to have to fill it with something like a drama that's going to cost them, you know, $3 million an episode. So they put on The Apprentice. It doesn't get great ratings. I, can, I looked at the ratings over the years. They've gotten worse and worse every year. And uh, the only year that it was ever a big show was the first year it was on, and that wasn't even Celebrity Apprentice. That was The Apprentice, where they actually took live human beings and put them through this gauntlet so they made a celebrity the show the show has been a failure over the years but has been used has been produced because it's so cheap to produce that well, you can and then you, you can just throw it into a slot and so you're going to make the money back on that uh my ex's family produces stuff for uh, mtv like the uh the man show you were talking about that the other night they're oh. the Producers. Well, and they haven't been uh, producing in many a year because that no, was no, like 15 years ago. Or 2000. Yeah, but um, uh, Stone Stanley Productions. And they did all of those shows, all those goop things for MTV where the kids get into barrels of goop. It's because that's they Nickel could that to begin with, To begin with, that's uh, not the Nickelodeon. It's the other one. Uh, uh, you can't do that on television? It, it, where you get slimed. Is that Nickelodeon? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, but it, it, uh, it was M not MTV. Yeah, but uh, so, yeah. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Rob? I, I was gonna. I'm just you know, you know, looking at headlines, and and this is uh, U.S. life expectancy drops for the first time in 22 years. My God! Really? Is there a reason <laughs> for that? It says here for the first time since 1993, life expectancy in the U.S. dropped significantly. On average, Americans can now expect to live 78.8 years, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention report released. Two years left, Alex. Really? Yeah. What? what what's the age it, again? Expect to live as long okay. as uh, longer than men, 81.2 years versus 76.3 years for men. Mm. 76. Ooh. You know why men die before women? Yes. Yeah, tell me. <laughs> they want to. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, well, uh, it always makes me feel good because I'm about ready to hit my 77th birthday. Thank you very much for bringing that mm -hmm. one up. Uh, my mother was 88 today. Was she? Yeah, and she's... And, and, in... your, and your father... She 40, was or she is? Uh, what? He died at 44. <laughs> See, I mean, 44. Jeez, that's young. Yeah. What did he die of? Uh, he was one of the first 100 ever to have open heart surgery. And <laughs> 1973 or two, 1972. Yeah. And uh, they didn't know much about clotting medicines back then. And uh, about 10 days after the operation, he had a blood clot, went to his brain. Mm -hmm. I remember dead. when they, uh, uh, well, open heart surgery, yeah. But they didn't replace the heart. It wasn't a transplant. No, it was uh, a valve. Yeah. A, a, a valve or an artery. I, you know, I'm not quite sure I was 17. Today they do those things as a matter of course, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, it was very when, experimental back then. Yeah, let's not take. When I was care. a kid, I did a job for a guy who was one of the first uh, survivors of a heart transplant. <clears throat> that was kind of cool. Yeah, well, I remember when the first heart transplant took place. Do you remember it was a guy in South Africa? Sure. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah the the uh, doctor. It wasn't Debakey. It was uh, no. It no. was uh, Debakey was his assistant. I can't remember his name now, but uh, he was uh, Bernard Christian Bernard Christian Bernard. Correct. But you know the guy. It was like a a very clutch. It was a, it was a artificial heart. It wasn't a real heart. Uh, was am, no, am, am I right? And then they did the Jarvik, and and right. the guy who they say that the guy who got that one he lived for about six months or something, but that it was, 
absolutely a living hell for him because they didn't make a silent Jarvik. They made yeah. one that made a big sound in your chest. And, and he couldn't, he always had to be hooked up, you know. So we've come a long way. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Jeff, a man who's had, I think, a few heart problems in his time, right, Jeff? Well, I, yeah, I've had, I think I've had four heart valves. One of them is the one that my mother gave me. <laughs> and uh, the one that I have right now is pretty good. But uh, I remember when I had the first mechanical uh, valve, it actually clicked. And you could hear it like this. Really? At least you know really? you're still alive. Is something, and, somebody doing and, something with their hands, by the way, because we're getting a little noise here. That's why I showed my hands. I could hear it, too. I hear it, too. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> and I put so, myself anyway, on mute because I hear it. Uh, uh, Sounds like anyway, paper. a lot of people said, what kind of watch do you have? <laughs> That's not a watch. <laughs> That's my art. Like wow. It keeps on ticking. Yeah. But, I mean, you're, you're at a good example of that kind of medicine and the success of it. Oh, of course. Of course. And when, and when did you have your first heart operation? Uh, let's see. I was about 32 years old. So Wow. So you've been living know. with heart problems all your life. Yeah. Practically. yeah. And so, I'm very happy. And here you are in your early years. early 70s, and uh, you're fine. Yeah. And, and I got to tell you, this last surgery that I had, which you could hardly call it a surgery, uh, as compared to what heart surgery was, it's done with a catheter. Uh, it takes two hours, and um, and you wake up. And I said to my wife, oh, I know. Yeah. How are, you? are you okay?" And I said, "I feel great." I think I know where the sound's coming from. Are you wearing a headset, uh, Jeff? Yeah, I picked it off. It, oh, it's it, hitting your uh, your it, zipper. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, is it no? You, is it, you move it or is, you know whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. Okay. It's, it, that's the other terrible part about doing citizen panel uh, broadcasting is because you have to come up and figure out, be a detective and figure out where is that sound coming Who's from? Who's causing what? Yeah. You, oh, know. you know what other crappy shows uh, that uh, David did was uh, the Bob Goldthwaite show. That had, was one of his. He had a show? Yeah. Uh, Bob Goldthwaite uh, had a uh, Bobcat Goldthwaite. Yeah. He had a show? Yeah, yeah, it was I don't remember, Stone I don't remember him having a series. Yeah, I'll look it up. Yeah, I, uh, you know, here's Bob. What was it called? I, I have I, no, no idea. Uh, uh, Bobcat. Yeah. Goldthwait. Yeah. I remember when he was Bob Goldthwait, the Bobcat. You know. Yeah. You made his career. I helped. I helped. You know, to say you made somebody's career is kind of being egotistical because if they didn't have the talent, there's nothing you could do. There's no, you could move heaven and earth and you couldn't make that person be accepted yeah. by the public. So Well, you pushed them, you mm -hmm. know. I you, pushed You him. pushed his yeah. thumb. When yeah. people thought, didn't understand him and he wasn't very understandable, you were out there pushing well, him. I know how to play with the character, you know, yeah. and he appreciated that. Jeff, What's you had your hand up. I'm wondering if uh, any of the people that Phil has listened about who are now going to be working for Trump, was there anyone that you liked or thought were pretty good? Or were third, third that they were pretty bad, I should say. Is there any negative on the people that Trump has selected? Not so far. You know, we, we don't know what they're going to do yet. Um, uh, you know, I wasn't that crazy about Jeff Sessions, but I guess he's got a background in uh, uh, in the Justice well, Department. Well, remember one thing. Uh, uh, oh, well, Ben Carson, urban development. Well, uh, you know, he grew up in public housing in Detroit. You know, it, 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 you know, and I, 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 you know, I I grew up with a violinist. That doesn't mean I know how to make violins. You know, I mean, just well, he had a wine. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I mean, I, if you're going to give Ben Carson a job in the administration, be medical. Oh, yeah, Surgeon General. Yeah, I, I would have liked to seen that Surgeon General, yeah. or you know. Yeah, I, I do think I do kind of agree that that was kind of a race racist. You know? Yeah, yeah. That hey, he, he's, general. he's urban. Let's. <laughs> yeah, well, Surgeon General, I think would have been a better choice. What? 
Surgeon, Surgeon General, General would have been a better choice. Yeah, absolutely. But he probably wouldn't want it, you know. Uh, Patrick. Now, <clears throat> let's go off the racist comments and putting him in charge. The guy barely talked anyway, so he probably would never argue again. <laughs> even if he fell, so yeah. he'd just throw him off it and go, okay, okay, that's fine. Yes, Massa. <laughs> 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 oh boy, you're breaking up on us a little bit tonight, Patrick. But it's it's okay. We can we can live with it. Uh, it, it has to do with bandwidth on your end. Uh, but uh, let me see here. Uh, the, what was there was something that there was something that came across that I looked at and I went, wow, gee, that doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense. Uh, but nothing's making sense. These Even days. the uh, the person he appointed, uh, what was it, uh, a fast food industry guy. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Putzer. So the Putzer. But what is what's what's the department? Um, um, labor. 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 Yeah. Labor. Yeah. Oh yeah, and this so guy. This guy, guy is against, this guy is against raising the minimum wage. He wants to do no. away with it. He's against the fifteen dollar minimum. No, wage. he's against the minimum no. wage. Yeah, no. he's, he's, he's against the concept. The 10, 10. He b believes there shouldn't be a minimum wage. Uh, he feels it should go to ten ten, as far as I know. No, that's not I, that's I, not no, what I, I think saw. He's against the minimum wage period, or raising the minimum wage, which is ridiculous because we need to have a better minimum wage in this country. Yeah, there are. And, and then robots he, to make his burgers, which which I'm not totally against that. You you know you got to have you you got to have a balance of innovation, but also a protection of jobs too, though. But you know. When are we going to stop? You know, we can't have this kind of innovation because it's going to kill jobs. And that's even come from personal experience because right now I think I'm building, I'm building the machine that's going to kill my job. What, 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 uh, what, what, what machine is that? Just building a fiber optics network. Okay. And your job is? Installing it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, telecommunications. So how is it killing your job? Aren't they going to need once to keep we, putting in fiber optics? Well, once you have the network built, say, we, you know, like the company I work for has 200,000 employees. Okay. Once you have the network built, you need maybe 20,000 for the whole country. So, you know, the company's going to be able to make just as much, if not more money, and be able to get rid of the majority of their employees. And that's where I'm kind of at this, you know, you have to have the innovation but also at the same time, doesn't that company owe some responsibility to the employees that they let well, go here, because the employees the, built the machine? Here's the thing that you have to understand, Jason, and it's a perfect example of something that goes, it's the antithesis to what, you know, Trump would like us to believe. Oh, all the jobs are going to China and all the we're losing jobs to foreign countries. We're losing jobs to technology. It's right. the biggest loss of jobs where, Absolutely. you know, something robotic can do the job of somebody who doesn't i mean you go to a, a a a car plant today and what do they have in there they have they have robots putting cars together and the people are just pushing buttons here and there they what did i read about this one plant down in the south somewhere this this there's this one city and the guy can convinced a uh, uh, i think a steel manufacturer to put their plant in their town and they are running the steel plant with something like 20% of the people that would have to normally run a steel plant yeah. because it's brand well, new yeah. and they've well, automated all the processes. Well, what's yeah, the big car is, What's the big car company I believe in North Carolina? There's a big car company that it, uh, one of the foreign car companies. I think it's like uh, like uh, 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 yeah. to Toyota maybe? Yeah, I think it's Toyota, but I'm not sure. Yeah. A couple of well, maybe about nine years ago now, I was in a class, a VMware class, which is all about virtualization, server virtualization in New York City. It's more than nine years ago because I was still living in New York. Yeah. And I were I in the class, we, you know, we get to talking, and two of the guys that were in there were robotics guys. And they showed me, they 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 connected to this plant. What the, the Toyota plant or Saab? I don't remember which one it was, but it was fascinating that the, the way they were able to show me the entire layout of the plant, and they can remote control from their laptops 
any one of those robots, fix those robots. This is why we don't have manufacturing jobs anymore. You think you're going to bring back people to stand on a, a line and, and, you know, screw something together and move on to the next it's not happening anymore, well, folks. In this, in this town, and I think that's it, what Amy Amy said from the next show. You know, you think you bring all these manufacturing jobs back? They're not going to be the manufacturing jobs <laughs> that you saw before. You know, what might have took a hundred people, you might have five. Well, so it, that's steel, exactly like, what happened in the steel plant. And I may even be wrong about uh, it can operate at twenty percent the the employment level. It may have even been less than that, but at least it's this little town. And so uh, enough people got employed in that little town that it made it worth it for them to bring that company in and help them finance bringing that company. Is that on 60 Minutes you saw that? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's like in uh, Starkville, Mississippi, I believe. Yeah, pa Patrick. Uh, one, of the, one of the things for me personally with being a graphic designer is print going away, um, and and not completely because there'll never be a way for it to go away. You're always going to need point of purchase things like that and packaging. But the printing aspect of my industry has become so robotic in in this sense. My uncle worked for a large printing firm in Milwaukee. And when he started, there were, let's say, 200 people that worked on various presses and did various things. And he took me for a tour. Now, he'd retired. And they just put in a 12-color press in their uh, facility about two years ago. And this thing is literally as long as my house that I owned mm -hmm. was. And they had to put in a new foundation into the building and all of this. And they um, rebuilt the machine from Germany in um, New Jersey to make sure it was, it was right. Took it apart and then brought it to Milwaukee and re-put it together. Uh, it's a six-month class to get it, to get everybody up to speed. And when I say everybody, it's two people. Two people are running a 12 color press, and it's one person on one end where you feed the paper in, and it's one person on the other end. And it, in even 10 years ago, if they would have had a press that big, you'd have probably had 20 guys and gals working on it to make sure that nothing broke down. But there's a computer on both ends of the damn thing, and one in the middle, so that you can tell what is going on where and any problem. So their uh, print shop went from, like I said, around 200 people when he started. There are maybe 50 that work there now. And it putting out just the same uh, quality and everything, but everything been robotic and um, even cutting just like with 3D printing. It's the same sort of thing. They have mm -hmm. very similar things where you don't need a person anymore or mm -hmm. more than one or two people. You just push the button and the shit gets done. Okay, I have two hands that went up. Phil was first and then Jason. All right, I'm running out of steam. Uh, <clears throat> Bobcat's show was on FX. Uh, it was called Bobcat's Big Ass Show uh, with Bobcat Goldthwait. Well, I missed that one. <laughs> when was it when was it uh i'm not sure um they uh they were just talking about things that were done in association with stone stanley productions huh. uh, said that the uh, uh bob uh, there was this other guy that uh who's eric waddell you know who that is no. an announcer announcer no no all right well it's called came from fx's bobcat's big I believe it's ass. It, it's an A with two asterisks and then show. Oh, big ass show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, Jason. Uh, two pointer. Uh, one is a question off that. Was he the guy on a uh, police academy who was like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. talk yeah. like that? Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure. Um, <laughs> you know, and the, the other part, going back to Patrick, you know, I thought that I heard once upon a time that now we were supposed to basically be in as the gilded age. Basically where, you know, people are supposed to almost like the Jetsons, you're supposed to your full time job was supposed to be like 10 hours a week. 
that's what your shift was. You know, so in order to employ everybody, because everything's going to be so automated, you know, in order to give everybody equal employment opportunities, you you would, you would only be able to work ten hours a week because everything's become well, so efficient. Can you know? I say? So can I say, Jason? I, 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 I I'll tell you what happened to it, Jason. Uh, it has happened. Uh, it's very hard, for instance, in New York City for people to find jobs of more than thirty hours a week because anything over thirty hours a week. You have to play un pay unemployment compensation. You have to pay uh, medical benefits. You have to pay a lot of things. If you work under 30 hours, I believe, you do, are not considered a full-time employee, and therefore your business doesn't have to l live by certain rules they would have to if you were full-time. So there are a lot of part-time employees. When I was at, uh, at Sirius, I'd be willing to say that half the people working there were part-time. Did not you work. Didn't a, did not work a full forty hours a week. Many I, were like me. Were contract. Oh, know? that's the I other. Have, that's the other little side step. That the they big do. difference is, uh, and it's happening in my industry. If they work more than thirty hours a week, and you have more than fifty employees, you have to give them health insurance. But if it's under uh, uh, thirty hours, you don't have to give them health insurance. But you still pay unemployment benefits. You still pay all of those other benefits and taxes if they're an employee and not a contract but, worker. But that's the whole point. And I know you're not big enough to be. I'm exempt. Know, yeah, I'm saying, you know, you have these like the company I work for, multi-billion dollar company. They could easily afford, you know, to pay, you know, ha have four times the amount of employees and pay them, you know, to only work a quarter of the amount of time. So, you know, it's basically spreading the wealth out among the, the populace instead of the top 1% taking all the money. And, it, and that's that's productive. that's where the Gilded Age, you know, theory was coming along that people were only going to be working, you know, a quarter of the amount of hours well, and making the same here's amount my, of money. The here, production here, goes here, down. But here, here's my people. question. Here's, oh. here's my, uh, I'll get, to, uh, Jeff, you're next. I saw you raise Sorry. your hand. Here's my question. I asked this a couple of nights ago. Uh, to think that if we suddenly put big tariffs on China and so on, that jobs are suddenly going to come flowing back here is, is a misnomer. Um, uh, the fact is those jobs aren't going to come back here. Uh, uh, Apple is not going to start making iPhones in America. You know, you stop uh, bleeding. Uh, what? You'll stop the bleeding if you. No, you uh, won't stop. The, you uh, won't stop. stop you won't. You, you won't stop the bleeding because one of two things will happen. They'll be forced to make. They'll, they'll simply send their. Uh, you know, China is not the only place you can build an iPhone. You can build them in India too. Well, what are you right. going to do? You're going to put uh, trade embargoes against India? No. China's getting yes. expensive. China's oh. getting expensive. They're looking at Vietnam now. Yeah. I have a wood manufacturer uh, that the crap is made in China, and it was such good stuff. I said to the guy, what's going to happen if Trump puts the uh, tariffs on? He says, we're already moving our factory to Vietnam. See? Yeah. So, Vietnam so, so are those jobs are not coming back. And the other question is, and we look at a situation like Jason's, a lot of jobs are being phased out because these companies are able to get along on less people. You know, when they had to lay people off a couple of years back because the economy was terrible, everybody had to kind of double up on their jobs and do the job of somebody else as well as their own. And by the time that the economy started booming again, do you, think they, do you think they replaced those jobs? They brought them it all back? Boomed. Huh? Not not in the industries that lost the jobs. It, believe it me, it, it's far more of a boom than it was a few years ago. Okay, but these companies are not hiring people back. All right, it's not like they're saying, "Oh, well, we we, we have the money now, come back to work." No, well, they learned how to get along with less. Economics yet? Yeah, uh, Jason. Actually, first Jeff, he had his hand up. Oh, really? Oh, okay. excuse me. Yeah, Jeff. Excuse me. I'm yeah, okay. getting punched. Okay. Okay. A few things. Um, I, I always want to tell this to people, and, and, and I want you guys to believe in it. Working is, is really becoming obsolete in the United States, and, and a lot of it has to do with automation. And no matter what you do, people are going to continue to improve the automation, not reduce it. Uh, and, and even in addition to that, um, I, I worked with a little small company that was a supplier, and I go, boy, this place is really efficient. These people are, you know, all people working by hands. 
doing a lot of work. I go, how the heck do they work so hard and so effectively? He only allows them to come in the morning or the afternoon. So everybody work had a four hour job. Because of a four hour job, they don't take lunch, okay? Uh, they don't get any benefits. So a lot of, you know, the so-called uh, ways to make things more being bigger jobs, these are really smaller jobs. And, and I think uh, as, as far as some of these uh, automation in, in the development work that, that I used to do, we are always eliminating jobs that we used to have 20 years ago. And then we, we eliminated the jobs that we had 10 years ago that we got rid of. And, you know, all the time. And the only thing that I can tell you guys that's a little bit different is uh, when um, uh, Bush uh, left as president and we had this terrible economy problem, uh, we were looking at maybe laying people off. And we thought about it. We said, you know what? There's a little program and we could keep all the employees if everybody only worked four hours, uh, four days a week instead of five. And uh, it was a terrific program. We had good people and didn't lose any and we kept them all. Did you lose so, salary for that? Did they work, make less money for the four days? Effectively, yes. But only a small percentage because there was a government uh, way that that uh, instead of being unemployment, off, they gave her a certain percentage of it. What were you and saying? And then the fact that their taxes went down mm -hmm. at the same thing. And these guys, it was not such a bad thing. And you know what? That company could run very effectively at four days a week. If anybody really wanted to run it that way, Jason. Jason has his hand up. Jason, I was just going to say with uh, Phil's thing when you're saying about they're moving their factory to Vietnam, um, you know, if they were to do a smart tariff system, what they would be looking at is, you know, if it costs you fifty cents and it costs us a dollar, there's going to be a fifty cent tariff on it. So even if they were to move it to Vietnam and only cost them thirty cents, now there'd be a seventy cent tariff on it. And that would be more equalizing the playing field. Doesn't matter where it's going to be at; it has to be kind of equal to the cost that it costs the product to be made in the United yeah. States. Phil, T Jason, that's if they do a tariff. But uh, what uh, smart Trump is tariff. saying, yeah, what Trump is saying is that most of this issue is over the manipulation of money, and the guy that he's uh, appointed or wants to appoint as Secretary of State, the guy from Exxon Mobil. Uh, he is uh, very adept at dealing internationally with these governments that manipulate their currency. And uh, so it, the, I, see it, I see his plan and how he's going to do it. And the only other thing I wanted to say was the guy from Carl's Jr. also said, robots don't get sick and uh, and uh, what, do you, what do you say? They don't complain. You don't have <laughs> yeah. to feed them. Yeah. Yeah. But, who, who was it? I was just thinking wait, about wait, 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 Who wait, was it that said that don't oh, employ oh, anybody sir. that you have to feed? Oh, I don't oh, know. No, no, no. You're, you're thinking of, uh, of uh, uh, P.T. Barnum, Barnum who once said, yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't uh, use anything that eats. I think that was something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Rob, you had your hand up. I was going to say uh, to Phil that if there's anything that I'm curious about when it comes to Trump, because he supposedly is this businessman, is some of his uh, some of the business acumen he might put towards uh, some of those types of uh, issues that we have, where countries are manipulating their currency to make it attractive and all that. If if he finds a way around that, okay, I'd be interested in you know that would be one area that I think he might have some success at if you know that is you know about the only place I'm a little bit optimistic about well uh i'd like to see the dollar get pegged to some sort of gold standard whether it's eleven hundred dollars or something else where you can have uh at least you don't have to have the gold in in the treasury you just peg it to that and the same thing happens with other people's currency uh all around the world so therefore you're playing on a more even playing ground 
mm. if there's if there's one item that it's does anybody to, remember what the problem with current, gold was peg, same thing. Hmm? was anybody I'm remember sorry. what the problem uh, pegging your economy to the gold was i think there is a there were some problems with it when we used to yeah do it. nixon eliminated it because he wanted to improve the economy and that set off so he'd get reelected and that set off a whole bunch of inflation and other problems uh, and, and and for a short period of time, uh, the American economy flourished because he uh, uh, eliminated well, yeah, the gold but, standard. But, but, but isn't that, it, it, it wasn't there also a time when gold was the price was set? It was always thirty two dollars an ounce. Do you remember fixed, that? Yeah. yeah, it was fixed. And then all of a sudden it went unfixed, and so now it fluctuates like crazy. And uh, Tom Hartman goes on the air selling gold all the time. And well, uh, and about 50% of his listening audience lost tons of money when there was a gold flush out a well, few years buying back. Gold, pegging to gold means that the instead of having a Federal Reserve, what you have is you have them either release more money and as, as, as the dollar becomes stronger, they release more money, uh, printed money. And as the dollar gets weaker, uh, they release less. So what that does is it uh, is it pegs it to some standard, uh, and and if the other nations peg to the same standard or use the dollar because it is pegged to to that standard, you'd have a lot more stability. I had a former friend of mine, David Feldman, who used to say that my father was, always used to tell me money doesn't grow on trees, but actually it's a paper product. Uh, yeah. And the fact is that I had to inform him that his joke was fallacious because money is not paper it's cotton it's fiber and, it grows uh, on bushes yeah yeah it doesn't grow on trees um here's you know i mean what i was saying the other day and and we've never had a sufficient answer to this is if everybody was employed there aren't enough jobs to go around i don't uh, i don't agree with you oh really yeah and tell me how i'm wrong well, uh, because you're making an assumption that's not based mm -hmm. on fact. Okay, so since you don't know how to run technology, really, and, yeah. and let's say all the jobs in the future are technological, are you willing to clean out toilets for a living? If I have to. <laughs> if I have to, I do whatever I got to do to make a living. And that is the truth. Today's jobs are all high tech. Any industry that's looking for people, they're all high tech. Now, I don't mean they're computer jobs, but I mean they're technical jobs. They're not you, you know, if you're a laborer, you know, there are still labor jobs, obviously, there are people build things, but today's workforce, you know, you don't just, uh, you know, stand in a factory anymore. Well, Those people me, are yeah. displaced. Let me, give, let me give you an example in our business, and Rob knows this to be true. I had a friend, uh, Lori Thompson, who was my newswoman at one time in San Francisco, and when we didn't have jobs in San Francisco anymore, she went to work for what was then Clear Channel, is now iHeartRadio. And uh, she got a shift uh, working 15 hours on the weekends doing a music show. How much do you think she got paid for that 15 hours? And I'll $30, ask you. $150 a, a, a shift. Uh -huh. How uh, much? Uh, I, I bet $150 a shift. You're not even close. Uh, not even, yeah. You're not even close. No? Anybody want to take a, a guess? I'll give you the answer. We, they had a thing, and they've had a thing going for a long time, called voice tracking. Mm -hmm. And you voice That's track, you go in corner. and you voice track your show. Uh, she went in and voice tracked her show, and they told her she couldn't take longer than an hour and a half to do it, and they were going to pay her 50 bucks an hour. She filled, ready for this, 15 hours of airtime at a radio station and got a magnificent check for $75 a week. That's yeah. what's happening. And it's not just happening in the radio business, it's happening everywhere in different permutations. Absolutely. And so when you say there are enough jobs to go around, I'm sorry, there are not enough jobs to go around if everybody wants to be employed. That's what well, I was saying with like the Jetsons, you know, George Jetson got paid a regular wage to sit there, lean back and push a button one time. That's what we need to start going to yeah. instead of letting these multi-billion dollar corporations just take all this money yeah, and yeah, but you see, do got, nothing with the it. The reason they're multi-billion dollar corporations is because they've managed to work their way around having to f pay people. Look, you know. that's just like a union. What you're saying is you can't you can't have one guy press a button and that be his job. 
That's never going to happen. I mean, I don't blame organizations for not wanting to do that. If you're going to work a, a, you know, a, a what was what did you say? A four hour week or a, ten, a one one day a week, and and earn what I'm earning right now to to work one day a week. That's not. I was talking. I was talking I'll give you a good example of, of uh, this kind of thing. And I, 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 I was talking. I'm liberal. I was talking to a friend of mine, uh, Walter Sabo, and he he said at one point. He thought it'd be great if Judge Judy did a radio show three hours a day across the country. Think of the uh, the syndication possibilities on it. So he got a hold of Judith Scheinland, Judge Judy, and he proposed this idea to her. And she paused for a moment and she said, uh, pardon me, but I only work three weeks a year. We shoot all those episodes over a three week period and I make, at that time, $30 million a year. Why should I do a three-hour program every day? Mm. Wow. <laughs> you know, Jason. But, Rob, it's perfectly feasible when you realize how much your boss makes or the owner of the company makes. Yeah, but, but they're making so much money that they can't even spend it. They, they, they have no idea of what to be able to do with it. They have to be able to buy other companies just to be able to spend their money. You know, that that's where we need to be going in order to support people well, and have them have a decent lifestyle. Yes, I draw the line there for all the things, you know, against Phil. And I draw the line there. I'm sorry. I, 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 that, that's a handout to me. And I look, I'm, I'm liberal but i don't that's if you know just but, your so what are you going to do with these people who don't uh, can't get work because everything's been so automated but it's, it's everything's so automated you can't do anything tell them to see the computer in charge <laughs> well i mean uh, and there, there's already a computer to see the computer in charge you can't even do that anymore you're right you know well, all, right. I, all I'm I mean, saying, I'm all I'm systems saying. right yeah. now that are going to put people like what I used to do out of work. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I was a specialist, and I'm selling systems right now that generalists can can work. So you're going to pay. They were paying me a lot of money to go in there and design these systems. They're completely turnkey solutions. Mm -hmm. You pop them in. You don't have to think twice about it. Everything is everything is converged and everything works together. One pane of glass to manage it, as opposed to what I had to do. And so people okay. like me who were still working on the tech side in the next five, six years. Listen, you know what you've be, got? What you've got, what what you've got wait a minute. Hold on a second. What you've got right now going into office as president of the United States is a guy who hasn't got a clue about how the world runs today. He's used to building buildings in New York. He's used to running in an old economy. This is a world economy. It's very complex, and it doesn't. And it means that yes, jobs are going to flow out of the country, because other people are becoming manufacturers. It's a world economy, and you have to. We have to learn how to deal with that, and how to then take care of our people and make sure they're 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 doing something or getting something or being taken care of, and can't just say, oh, we're gonna bring all the jobs back home, because you're not gonna bring all the jobs back home. There's no way you can do that. Yes, so sir, Jason. You. Jason? Uh, you know, it, and that's where I just used my one employer as an example, as far as, you know, actually we have about 280,000 employees. A lot of them are probably in call centers. Let's say 100,000 are actual technicians like I am. When you get done building the fiber network, say they maybe need 10,000 across the whole entire country. What are these other, you know, these other 90,000 employees supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And go be above and beyond that, there's another technology coming out where they're going to be able to do get fiber optic speeds wirelessly. So you're not even going to need that amount of people. Maybe you need a thousand people across you the country, it, and that's one company. That's one company. You're forgetting about Comcast. Yeah. You're forgetting yeah. about Verizon. You're forgetting about Sprint. You're forgetting about all these other people who might also have hundreds of thousands of employees let's, there too. You're, yeah. you're talking about a million employees being laid off because let's, of technology. Let's let's yeah. go to Phil and then go to Rob. Yes, Phil. Right. Uh, I I bought my server in 2011. And I and I upgraded it, one that I had from like 2007. And this 2011 server, my IT guys telling me, hey, Phil, it's time 
to you know it's five years old you you know you don't want to uh, be running on a five-year-old server so it's going to be twenty seven hundred dollars for another server cheap. with the kind of shit that you need yeah i know it's cheap we buy the dell stuff but you know the uh the the thing is nothing lasts forever especially with uh the, the you know with technology huh. and the technology changes and you know pretty soon uh, i'll be going to uh, some sort of uh, cloud-based thing and not a certain and then you won't ever have to do anything ever again yeah, because that's, it's going to be yeah. software based not hardware that's based. That's fantasy. stop that it's not fantasy because that's what my company is going towards is towards software based not hardware based. right It'll you can't virtual stop reality. that so, wait, wait, wait a minute. rob you can't stop that i have been working since i was 16 years old and i've had careers my first one was in radio there is no more radio the way i know it when I saw what was happening, I retooled and I and I got some more education and I did television. When I saw a technician work in television drying up, same thing, automation came in. Took jobs that had took, you know, a whole group of people to do. One guy does it, stares at a monitor of, you know, thirty networks. Well, you remember you remember the day you remember the days, don't you, Rob, where behind every camera there was a cameraman? Absolutely. There was a, the, all they're, these jobs. They're all so robot you cameras they, now. So you what had to. that you had a you had a burgeoning business in IT. I got I I again re, went to school, retooled myself, got into IT. I saw what was happening there. I went into virtualization because I saw what was happening there. I'm no brain. I'm no brilliant guy. I took but, some courses. To I applied it. myself, and I advanced again. Now I see the systems that I'm selling are going to put what I did out of business, and I've now I'm in the middle of reinventing myself one more time. Yes. You're right, you're right but at some point there's new ventures out there. There are always new ventures, and you've got to – But there's up. not because everything keeps on going technology 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 you need less and less people for everything it's not just what i work in it's yeah. not just what you work in it's yeah in and I, I i think where where jason's right rob is that what you do yes there's a job for now but there will be, because of you what you do there will be less and less need for the job you do and but that's it, happened in every industry many, i've ever been in and i've it, changed and that's industry. that's my point it's every industry well, so that, there's less and less jobs every day less and less <laughs> jobs every day there's not less and less people though but there's always new industry and there's always new which takes less people no it doesn't not when it first starts yeah. out it's only when it becomes a mature industry that it it figures all that stuff out when the computer industry was was in its infancy back in the 90s when we first started seeing email showing up i didn't have email when i was in television but how many that. typists did it take before like that? that how many secretaries were typing shit before that i understand i understand but there are new emerging areas and technologies that that yeah. as as a Which, person okay. you think hey you got listen 30 years I, I, work I, I, you have to go and do some research I, and, I, and change i gotta bring this to a close I, it's been fa a fascinating discussion a good one Welcome back, Phil. We're glad that you're you're Thanks. at least partially. Now you've got three days to get Sorry. all well again and be p full of spit and vinegar. Scott, Thanks. thank you for being with us tonight. Patrick, always a pleasure. Jason, you know we only see every about every other week because that's when your wife lets you out. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if if she'd let you out some more, we'd be very happy. When I can borrow my balls. Yes, uh, <laughs> Rob. Thank you, and of course, Jeff. You know, you've been a real, you're a real pleasure, a real addition to the program. Thank you all. Good night. Okay, good night. Good night. And that's, uh, that's me saying good night to everybody. And let me uh, get the video over here so that uh, uh, we can uh, see me. Hi, how are you? That's it for me tonight. Uh, these guys are gone and over with. And uh, uh, I, how do I get rid of them? I guess that's how I get rid of them. There we go. Okay. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for having joined us. And uh, for the TV people, you too. In the meantime, stay tuned for Jack and Amy. They're next over most of this gab net. And uh, uh, you can... Uh, well, hold on a second. I, I, you know what? I my keyboard. I screw things up. Anyway, thank you so much. Stay tuned for Jack and Amy with the intersection next. We'll see you on Tuesday. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay?
I do a real stupid thing, ladies and gentlemen. I, I actually I have a keyboard here, my keyboard, right? And and I did this last night. I push on the keyboard and it changes the song that's playing. So you know, hey, that's it. Uh, the TV people, you're the only ones watching me right now. Shh, just between you and I. Join us on Tuesday for the live version and uh, for the radio, you know, the radio style version, the internet audio version of our program at gabnet.net. And then we'll see you here, uh, TV wise, uh, next week as we do a simulcast of our program. Uh, on the TV thing. Thanks. Good night, everybody.